Hello and welcome back to Level Up Your Game series. This is part 2. First, I'll clarify a few things about Windows Explorer that I didn't mention in the first video, and then we'll dive right into downloading and working with archive files. When we looked at Windows Explorer, we focused more on the right side of the window. However, you can't really navigate around too much without using the left side, so let's do that now. As you can see, there are a few sections on the left. Favorites, Libraries, Home Group if you have one set up, Computer, and Network. If you click the little arrow, it will display the folders within that section underneath. If you click directly on anything on the left side, it will display contents on the right side. Let's have a brief look at these categories. Network is a list of devices on your local network. Any computers and printers you have on your local network will be listed here for easy access. Home group is also network locations, but the concept of home group is more about simplified home networking with Windows 7 or newer operating systems. We will talk more about networking on later videos of the series. Computer is where all physical drives on your system are listed. Over here you'll see your hard drives, optical drives and any other physical media attached to your computer. Left side currently doesn't list any of my removable media drives, such as my DVD drives, because there are no disks in them. Windows will assign letters to your physical drives, starting with C. You may be asking yourself, why does it start with C and not A? The answer has to do with the old days when we used to have these floppy disks. Drive letters A and B are reserved for floppy drives, and two floppy drives were a limitation of old PCs. But I digress, let's go back to talking about locations. Libraries are a listing of my document folders on my hard drive for easy access, such as my music files, pictures, videos, and so on. Favorites, as the name suggests, are favorite locations. By default, it will have a few locations, but you can easily add as many folders as you'd like. Simply navigate to the folder you'd like on your favorites, while you have the contents of that folder displayed on the right side, Right click on your favorites title on the left and select add current location to favorites. If you want to remove a location from favorites, just right click on that location under favorites and select remove. So let's continue from where we left off in the last video. How is your modding progress? Well, I checked out the modding sites you mentioned and downloaded a few, but I'm not sure where the files went. Okay, let's go over the downloading process. I know you are using Firefox, but I'll start with Internet Explorer, which is the most common since it comes with Windows, and then show the same process with Firefox and Chrome. All these browsers have one thing in common about downloading. They save downloaded folders to your downloads library by default, which is also accessible from your user folder. With Internet Explorer, once you click on a download link, you'll get a bar at the bottom of the screen asking you what you would like to do with this file. You can open it directly or you can save it to your download folder. Or if you like, you could click on that little arrow next to save and select save as to choose a different name and location to save it. If you'd like to change the default download location, click on settings and select view downloads. Click on this options link and you can browse to the location you'd like to save your downloads, select it and click OK to accept. Next is Firefox. When you click on a download link with Firefox, it will give you two options either to open the file or to save it. If you would like to change the save location, you have to go to Tools menu, select Options, and then click on this Browse button to choose a different location. With Chrome, you don't even get an option when you click on a download. It will automatically save the file, and you can choose to open it from the download bar at the bottom. If you'd like to change where downloads are saved, click on Customize icon here and select Settings. At the bottom, Select Show Advanced Settings, and if you scroll down, you will see the download section where you can change the default download location. So that's how you can find your downloads. Were you able to find yours? Yes, I did. It was a zip file. What do I do with it? That's a compressed file. On the internet, many downloads will be compressed to save time and simplify downloading. Usually, any download will have many files in it. Tens, hundreds, or even thousands of files. Also, they may be quite large, which could take a long time to download. Compression takes all of these files, puts them together into a single file, and makes that file much smaller by using various algorithms. 
Depending on the algorithm used, the files may be of different types, even though they are all compressed. Some of the common ones you see are zip and rar files, although there's many more. In most cases, compressed files won't do us much good until we extract the contents. Windows can display contents of and extract zip files, but not other compressed files. Luckily, we have a free program that can open them all. It's called 7-zip and it can be downloaded from 7-zip.org. Download the 64-bit version or 32-bit if you don't have a 64-bit system and install it. Default options during installation are fine. Just click next until it's done. How do I use 7-zip? It's actually pretty easy. 7-zip works very much like Windows Explorer, but it can also show you the contents of compressed files and extract them. You can double click on a compressed file to open it, select the files you'd like to extract, and drag to any Explorer window to extract contents there. Or you can click on the Extract button here, select the folder to extract to, and click OK to extract files. 7-Zip will also add a context menu to right-clicking action on files on Windows Explorer. You can right-click on any compressed file and choose Extract. Or you can select any number of files and create a new archive with them by selecting either Add to Zip or 7Z file. Feel free to play around with it and get comfortable using it. Got it. So I downloaded this file, found it in my Downloads folder. Now where do I extract the contents to? Now that really depends on the game. For Skyrim mods, usually the contents of the archive are copied under Skyrim's data folder. And even then, there may be exceptions. The best thing to do in this case is read the instructions that come with the mod. You may either have to read the page you downloaded it from, or it may have a text file that has these instructions in the compressed file. These files may be given names to make it obvious that they are instructions to installation, such as please read.txt, readmefirst.txt, readme.txt, read.me, you get the idea. 7-Zip makes it easy to view contents of a text file without extracting the contents. Just right-click on the file and select Edit. It will open with Notepad so you can read it. That's all there is to it. Now you know where to find your downloaded files, how to use 7-Zip to extract the contents of archived files, and how to find the information needed to install the mod you downloaded. On the next video of the series, we'll talk about mod managers that make it even easier to mod a game. If you found the video helpful, Please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll try to help if you bump into any issues. Thanks for watching.